So today's tip of the week, what hospital gowns have in common with one-page contracts? Yeah, think about that. So how many of you guys are right now using a one-page contract? Okay, you guys are so interactive. This is really so fun for me. You know you're not on Zoom, right? Okay. <laughs> Okay, oh, someone says, no, I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm advanced. I'm using the two-page contract. So guys, uh, this is the same one-page contract, two-page contract. I'm gonna lump them, and I'll even go as far as lumping a three-page contract into the same bucket, and also explain why one, two, and three-page contracts are kind of like hospital gowns. So why do we love these one-page contracts? Why are you using one right now? It's the only template you have. Somebody else said free. Did somebody else say free? Is that what I heard? Anybody else have a comment about why you're using a one-page contract? They're simple. They're simple. Yeah. Short. Yeah? Yeah. So uh, easy, quick, understandable language, right? Uh, covers all the basics, right? It covers the price when we're closing, right? The owner and... Uh, 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 and, and who the buyer is, makes sellers feel at ease. Do you think a one or two or three page contract might make a seller feel pretty comfortable? Versus, for example, the normal Trek contract, which is 11 pages long, yeah? So, so, so I, uh, and then does it sometimes make investors feel at ease, right? Because this is easy to explain, right? Does it not? Yeah. So, so here's, here's why I say a one-page uh, so one contract is, is kind of like a hospital gown. And I, I, th I don't think we have any children in the room, do we? <laughs> uh, so if children in the room, I would just ask, this might be the part of the show that might not be PG-13, so I might just ask that you cover your eyes. And now, and I didn't have any of the attention of the young woman who is uh, in this room with us until right when I said that, and now it's like, it's like eyes are perking up. So this is why I feel like a one-page contract is kind of like a, a hospital gown. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> Um, and this is kind of not, not what we want to see, right? Uh, but this is what we see a lot of times when we are in a position where we're putting on a hospital gown or where we are putting on a uh, one-page contract. He's headed to the I see you. Ha <laughs> 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 ha This side sort of got it. This side's maybe still thinking about it. I don't know. Yeah, so he's headed to I see you. All right, anyway. Uh, so the one-page contract, how it equals a hospital gown. The one-page contract covers us mostly, right? Except for the parts that really count, right? Um, uh, hospital gowns leave us feeling a little vulnerable. I don't know if any of you guys have ever put one on. A little vulnerable, a little uncovered, a little embarrassed, a little explode, uh, exposed, uh, undignified, maybe like an idiot. Uh, and then they're never like super stylish either, right? And the, the material's like not that like 300 thread count in cotton, no, right? Uh, but the problem is they can lead to traumatic experiences in public. And by, and by that I mean traumatic experiences when you take, when you take uh, one of these one or two page contracts to a title company. What's the title company gonna say when you drop that off? First of all, they're going to say, oh, thank you very much. And then as soon as you walk out, they're going to roll their eyes and they're going to say, what an idiot. I'm telling you, right? It's just like when you say, when you say to a real estate agent, well, Zillow says my house is worth, uh, it's like the, the agent's like, oh my God, what an idiot. So, <laughs> so uh, these are the things that, that will happen. So what the, the issue is, that when you put one of these on, when you use one of these one or two page contracts, you may not even realize where you are exposed because again, that gap point is behind you. So it all feels really super wonderful when you're putting it under contract. Everything is great, right? Until what? Until when? Until you get to the closing and the, and the title company's like, well, who's paying prorations? Who's paying the title insurance? Who's paying the filing fees? Uh, who's, who's paying you know, the attorneys? Who's gonna write up the documents? Uh, uh, 
what happens if, and, and, and so what I love about the Trek contract is there, there is something that the Trek contract has. It's, I, I call it the O-S-H-I-T clause, okay? So this is the clause that is in there that, that everyone asks for, you know, because I have to unscramble a lot of people's eggs when they mess something up in their real estate investing. So people will come to me and they say, I have this problem with this contract. And I'll say, well, let me look at the contract. So there are several uh, uh, sections in there that go through what happens when someone doesn't perform, goes through what happens when, I don't know, a hurricane hits and the house gets flooded, right? Which never happens here. Right? Right. Right? So the problem is you don't realize that you're in trouble until something, you know, happens, right? And then when something happens, you realize exactly how much trouble you are actually in. Uh, so in that case, you may not realize it until it might be too late. Uh, so that's why I want you guys to, to, to know it might sound attractive, right? It might feel simple and easy, but at the end, it might punch you in the face or leave you exposed in the back. And again, you may not know it right until the very end. Now, for the Trek uh, contract, what I love about it is number one is the standard contract, right? Uh, so it's written by a broker attorney committee. They get together, they updated it about they updated it about every once, pardon me, every once, once every 12 to 18 months. Uh, it goes through all of the case law. Every time they update it, it's updated based on what's happened in, in terms of people suing each other, right? It is equally unbiased. Uh, it's not biased towards the seller. It is not biased towards the buyer. Um, it covers all of the things that you want to make sure that you're covered on. Uh, and it's the same cost as what you might get online. It is a free document. Uh, and the title companies will love you when you hand that to them because it gives them all of the instructions that they need to produce the, the HUD, the closing disclosure document, uh, the promissory note, the deed of trust, and the general warranty deed, plus all of the other papers and disclosures that are part of that. And of course, it's easy to access online. So if you've never pulled it, uh, never looked at it, just Google TREC, T-R-E-C. Uh, once you get there, you'll just click on forms, you'll click on popular, and one of the most popular forms that you'll find there is that TREC 124 residential contract. Now, uh, if you're thinking, well, what if I want you know, to do something other than a one to four residential, right? No worries, TREC has you covered for unimproved property, raw land, condos, uh, farm and ranch, uh, and new build contracts. If you're looking for a commercial contract, you will have to be working with a realtor to be able to access that through the Texas Association of Realtor Forms, um, but those are also available and, and done as well. Now, there is, I know, some intimidation and some overwhelm uh, factor when it comes to that Trek contract. I did a little count before I came here today because I wanted to just dork out a little bit, uh, but there are 51 blanks uh, there are 49 check boxes. There's eight initials for the seller, eight initials for the buyer, a signature section for the buyer, a signature section for the seller, a whole page that's specifically devoted to brokers and a whole page that's specifically devoted to the title company, okay? But the good news that I have to share with you today, as my pastor always says, is it's kind of like Mad Libs. Does anybody remember that? Mad Libs, yeah? They give you context clues, right? Star Wars is an adjective, noun, of adjective versus evil in a noun place far away. There are adjective battles, right? So it'll, it gives you context clues like seller, okay, put the seller's name here. Buyer, okay, put the buyer's name here. Okay, dollar sign, sales price, okay, put the price here. So you can get through it pretty easily. Uh, but it does take a little bit of practice. What's the best way? What is the best tip that anyone could give you about uh, practicing filling this out? What do you think the best, best tip is? Someone says, just do it. I like that. Someone said, role play it. So probably uh, one of my favorites. Sell your own house to your LLC. There's something about that that makes it personal. And when, when things are made personal to us, are we more likely to remember how to do it? The answer is yes, right? Uh, write up a contract, 
for your neighbor's house, your mom's house, your friend's house. And I will say, practice it before you get in front of a seller. Because I mentioned earlier that the uh, big thing that we see uh, that, you know, one of the advantages of these one and two and three page contracts is it makes the seller and makes the investor maybe feel more comfortable, right? So, so is that really true? Or is that just how we show up as an individual? If we show up confident, right, is it, is it, and you just say, this is the standard contract, oh, I feel much more comfortable now knowing that this is the standard contract. Let's, yes, let's move forward, right? Versus like, I don't know any of this stuff, and this is the first time I filled one out, and how, how likely is that going to go whether you're doing a one-page contract or an 11-page contract, right? Probably not very well. Uh, so practice it before you get in front of a seller. Again, the fastest way that I've seen people really connect with filling it out and understanding it uh, is to do one um, and, and sell your own house to your, own, to your LLC. And then bring that one with you when you are going to talk to the seller. Because if you have to refer back, you may have made some notes to yourself of where to get you know, the legal description as an example uh, to be able to uh, finish that out. And I will tell you guys, um, contracts um, can be amended. And I would say, if I were to estimate, um, I'd probably say 90% or more of contracts are what? Amended, all right? So if you screw something up, guess what? It's okay. Now, there are a couple things I definitely don't want you to screw up, and number one is I wanna make sure you have everyone on the deed also signing on the contract, okay? Because if you don't, you have something that's called an unenforceable contract, which means that if someone later comes up behind you and puts it under contract and has both sellers on there, guess what? You're gone, okay? Uh, so that's something important. I mean, there are several important items on there as well in terms of getting earnest money, uh, option money, uh, and the contract to the title company in a certain amount of time as well. But those are uh, some th things that are actually covered in the contract. So uh, let's all agree. Let's not bear all. Let's all, let's all agree. Let's get uh, fully covered. So as enticing as it is to... Um, uh, use that one, two, or three page contract, uh, please uh, instead grab the uh, track contract. That's the best way to be able to make sure that you are fully covered. So was this helpful to you guys who are thinking about maybe using something different? I know the realtors uh, in the room uh, are already on board with that. It's an easy sale, sale uh, to them. Uh, in fact, we have to as uh, realtors use that form. But for those of you guys who are just getting started, I just don't want, I want to make sure that doesn't intimidate you. And I want to make sure that you are fully covered. So uh, for us as part of Texas Readers, we learned a long time ago that the more resourced you are, the more knowledgeable you are uh, in terms of your network, your knowledge, the more successful you will be as a real estate investor. And sometimes, you know, when you go to YouTube University and they tell you just use a one page contract, uh, they're trying to make it easy for you, but sometimes taking the easy way out is not really taking the best way out. Uh, so I want to make sure you guys are getting the right knowledge uh, and not learning from people who are maybe sending you down the wrong path that might end up hurting you or exposing you at some point. Uh, and uh, stay with us. We'll help you guys figure out what it is to be successful along this journey. Uh, not only do we obviously invest ourselves, but we've helped a lot of members of the association become successful uh, as well. So would love for you guys to join us as part of Texas RIAs, and thank you for joining us for that tip of the week.